Welcome to Line Sensing. Today, we're in Italy, in case you can't tell. And we are going to be sensing the Nebbiolo grape. And I have my good friend Robin here. And you guys don't know, she's been in every other one of the sensing. She's our executive producer, director, uh, production department. She knows how all this goes. Yes, it's a, a really hard job, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> if it hadn't been for her, we wouldn't be on the air, believe me. Uh, but anyway, um, we've been neighbors for 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. So we kind of know each other's routine. So anyway, we're going to get rolling here with the Nebbiolo tasting because Robin likes Italian reds. I sure do. So as we reminded you at the end of the last one, uh, you may want to go read up on the Nebbiolo, and that's in the Piedmont region of Italy, up in the northwest corner of the country. You might want to buy a bottle from each of these sub-regions. Um, and here are the three that we're going to be serving in a minute. But if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, or invite your friends over to share the wine and share the uh, sensing with us, step by step, and doing your own, uh, then you may want to stop here and go do that. If not, we're going to go ahead. And again, the whole strategy for this course is we're going to learn one grape at a time. And we're going to learn that one grape by tasting it from three different regions, or in this case, sub-regions. Um, and we're going to be using the University of California Davis system. It's 20 points. We're keeping it at a higher level. We're really focusing on the senses. What do you see in the glass? What about the nose? What about the taste and feel in the mouth? Then we're going to be describing each dimension that we detect in standard wine terminology. And we'll even be using a wine wheel to help us with that. But we're developing our skill in assessing and describing those attributes. But most of all, we're going to relax and have a good time. Pretty sure of that. Overall, in red wine sensing, the colors go from pink to a tawny brick red. Those aged red wines are more tawny uh, orange tint on the edge. But in this case, we should be expecting this to be somewhere between, well, I think in this case, probably dark deep red, tawny brick red. In the nose, um, we could go the whole gambit here, but I think we're going to have a little bit more fruity and some earthy and maybe some oak on the end. The others, uh, red wines, can go the whole gambit on nose and mouth. A little bit about the Nebbiolo wine grape itself. When you categorize wine grapes, red ones, particularly by body, it can fall somewhere between medium to full-bodied and full powerful. The Barolo, for example, is thought of as one of the most powerful full red wines there is. Uh, but some of the Nebbiolos might have more of a medium body. Uh, Nebbiolo from the Piedmont region, the word itself means fog. They get a lot of fog in their uh, nighttime and daytime growing season. They have a hot growing season. It's a fussy grape like the Pinot Noir. And it's terroir expressive, meaning every particular area where you grow these grapes, the wine can be somewhat different. It can be fruit and floral in the nose, and it can change quickly to aggressive tannins in the mouth. So the first one we're going to be sensing is Gattinara, 2015. That's medium to full body, and it says alcohol goes from 12 to 13. This one happens to be 13.5. The color is probably pale garnet. The nose will probably get red fruit and violet. The mouth might have aggressive tannins. And food pairing, juicy roast or creamy risotto. So we're going to stop now and we're going to show you the bottle. OK, this is an unusual looking bottle. The shape's a little different, squarer, shorter, fatter. But this particular winemaker, Travaglini, um, they really do distribute a lot to the United States. So if you're looking for one like this, you should be able to find the Trebaglini. 
Uh, here again, we are not getting a word on the front that says it's the Nebbiolo grape. It does say some terrific things about the wine on the back, about the cherry in the nose and about a smooth finish. All right, so we're gonna start with, what do you think of the color of this? Because you've seen all of the wine senses we've done so far. Oh, you know yes. the whole spectrum. Yeah. Um, actually, it's a little bit paler than I would have expected. Um, and there's a little bit of a orange tinge. I agree totally. So it's, it's a pale red with an orange tinge on it. Mm -hmm. Does it have any legs, like strong alcohol? It does. It has some legs. Okay. Um, probably not as heavy as some calves, et cetera, that I've seen, but it does have some pretty good legs. And how does it move in this glass? Does it make you think it's a thin body or a, or a bigger body? Uh, kind of a medium. Okay. And a lot of people don't worry about body when they're looking at the wine. I like to. I think you can start getting a better feel for the wine very early. So I like saying, okay, we've got a medium body, but I'll put a question mark on it because you don't know what it's going to be like in the mouth. No, not at all. So we get there. Now we're going to worry about the aroma and bouquet. And considering some of these are aged in wood, there may be a distinct bouquet separate from the smell you get from the grape, which is the aroma. It's a lighter, it's lighter than I expected, um, but a little bit. Spicy. Yeah. A little spicy. Spicy. I have to like burnt fruit a little bit. Mm -hmm. Spicy fruit. Yeah. You get cherry or what? Uh, I'm not getting cherry. It's very subtle. Uh, it, yes, it could be very, uh, very light. Light fruit. Mm -hmm. Red fruit. Yes, definitely red fruit. Okay. It's kind of pleasing. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you think it's going to taste like? Um, well, I think it's going to be uh, fruity, but it's there's a little bit of um, herbiness to it, so maybe we'll get a little bit of that. Are you going to ever finish or something? Mm -hmm. Or an oaky one? Some wood in there? Okay, let's see if you were right. I taste the tannins. Mm. A lot. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. What's going on, Emma Turner? What's talking about? Yes, sir. <laughs> it is very sharp. Is it smooth in the mouth? Is there a long finish? Uh, there's a, a a long taste in the mouth. It's what I would uh, say. It's just still sharp. It's still there, and it's still sharp. <laughs> Okay, she'll get a long piece of tart. Mm -hmm. It's dry, it's tart. Is there any fruit in the mouth? It's a 2015, mm -hmm. so it may have lost some of the fruit already. I, I'm not getting a real heavy fruit. <laughs> and the body in the mouth is big, little. I think it is uh, lighter than, or not as, uh, not medium bodied as I thought it was going to be. It's a little lighter than that. And we got uh, light on fruit. Do you think it's balanced? Because you, it seems to me that the nose gave you something that the mouth didn't. Yeah, it's very different. And I would, the tannins really make it lopsided in terms of the, uh, what you're tasting versus what you're smelling. So we'll say it's not well balanced. Yeah. Anything else, anything particular you'd like to eat with this? 
um, I'm thinking it, to off, something to offset the tannins, which would be um, maybe more rich, fatty food okay. that would um, sort of balance that out. We've got some goodies here. We've got some prosciutto and salami mm -hmm. and fontina cheese. Definitely dried meats would be good. Fatty foods. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to get another sip of it because I just had a nice piece of cheese. That might be a good thing. Hmm. It bit. is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It softens the tannin. It's Fontina. All right. We are going to go on to number two. Yeah, when I was interested in asking a question, um, the because we're using all this vocabulary to try and describe what we're smelling, um, when you are trained as a sommelier, do you uh, go out and re-familiarize yourself with all of these different aromas uh, based on like the actual fruits or woods or whatever they might be? Good question. Uh, what they did in uh, my class well, she took us into the kitchen and she had, with a glass turned upside down, a strong essence of whatever that was. It was like an extract and didn't tell us what they were, but there was like a room, there maybe were 30, 40 different smells. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, what really is frustrating is when you know you know what it is, but you can't put it in word. Right. You know, it's amazing about butter. <laughs> you get it up here and you go, right. But um, that's how we did it. We didn't really go and break open cherries and stuff. Because sometimes my words don't match what others do. A lot, of, a lot of people call green pepper. What reminds me of is when you take a branch out in the woods and you break it and you get that green wood. Mm -hmm. That's what I think they call green pepper. But okay. to me, it's psh, green wood. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about the same thing. So I often have to drift over to, to the green pepper vocabulary. Right. Even if it isn't what really hits in my head. Because there's some things what I see on uh, different wines that I have no idea, uh, for example, what currants would smell mm. like. So it, mm. it doesn't relate. But if mm. I, maybe if I spent some time just, mm. you know, sensing things as I go through the grocery store or something, I would be more familiar with the terminology, what they're talking about. I think it's a good idea. Maybe we could think about that as a separate tasting. Mm-hmm where we'll do cherries and then go to a wine that everybody declares has cherry in it. Right. And see if we agree. Mm -hmm. Or is it really wine cherry that's not really true to what we learned the fruit to be? Because right. that's like candy. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have strawberry gum or, or strawberry lifesavers, they're not the same as a strawberry. Mm -hmm. You know, A, they're really sweet because they're candy. Mm -hmm. So I think you're, you're going to get the wine version of the fruit, whatever right. you do. So I think that would be a neat idea for a special tasting mm -hmm. to do fruits and different things like that. We're on the Barbaresco, and I haven't had one of these in a long time, and I think last time I did was probably in Italy. Um, this is a 2015, and it's coming from clay soil. Generally, they're about 12.5, but this one is 14.5. So this is stronger than they state it's for an average Barbaresco. Color is black red, generally speaking. Nose of violet, red berry, earth, leather. If it's less than five years, it could be highly tannic in the mouth. Otherwise, if it's younger, it can be too powerful. It can become very complex and elegant, more graceful than a Barolo that we're going to have as our third one. Food pairing would be a dish that they have in Italy a lot, it's beef with Barolo, noodles with truffles, tomato pasta. Uh, very interesting. One thing to remember is a lot of these descriptions really fit the wine when it's at its peak of maturity, peak vintage, peak maturity. And we're buying these a bit cheaper and a bit younger. So they may not have all those elegant things that have been advertised. I find that true a lot, particularly with uh, red burgundies. Okay, so here we are on wine number two which is the Barbaresco, and I hope you all are enjoying your Italian wines with us. And I hope you have some goodies to go with it. If not, you can have some of ours. 
we have too much. And we have little animals walking around, if you haven't noticed in these sensings. Now and then there'll be a cat going by or a dog going by, but they keep it interesting. What do you think of the color of this one compared to the last one? It actually has around the rim the same orange that I'm seeing, uh, but it is um, a little more uh, toward a raspberry or a plum color. Um, a deep red, yeah. Raspberry plum. Same orange tint. Yes. And what, how do they move in the glasses? How many legs? It's got really good legs. Oh, really good legs. <laughs> and that comes from what, Marilyn? The, there's alcohol content? There's a couple of schools of thought okay. on it, but I think um, a lot of people think it, it, it is an indication of degree of alcohol. But there, there is still a debate going on, just like there's a debate about whether you filter wine or not. And there's always, just like anything, Two, two experts are still going to debate that. Mm -hmm. But I, to me, it seems to indicate the presence of more alcohol. This one is 14.5%. <laughs> so it's more than probably any others we've tasted or, or sensed this whole curriculum. Um, let's see, and it moves, da 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 da. Uh, what about in the nose? I like that very much. It's uh, I do feel a little bit of earthiness there, which I like very much. That's one of my favorite things in wines, especially red wines. Any fruit? It, it, there is a berry. Um, I'm difficult to say which one. Maybe cherry. Subtle. Um, yeah. It's still subtle, but uh, there is, um, I do smell it with this one where I didn't on the previous one. Subtle red fruit. Yeah, almost raspberry. Like raspberry? Raspberry, yeah. Uh, raspberry. Well, one thing I want to clarify for everybody, she usually reminds me of this when <laughs> she's off camera and, <laughs> and I go, oh, oh yeah. doing my job. <laughs> um, we are going to put all this on an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the census. So I realize it's very difficult to watch what I'm writing and to read my gosh darn print it. But um, we're going to put it there. It'll be much easier to see then at the end. Also, you're not going to have the same results we are. Uh, you probably have different lines. You probably have different years. You certainly have different palettes and opinions. Maybe yours is warmer or cooler than ours. but. Just, um, we'll probably all come up with the same general feeling about it. Uh, a Gattinara versus a Barbaresco versus a Barolo. And, and we taste three different ones the next time, but that'll shift a little bit. But anyway, I don't remember, remember that because I didn't have my executive producer off camera <laughs> saying, hey, remember to tell them that. Um, all right, what do you think it's going to be like in the mouth? Well, I'm hoping it's uh, very smooth. It, with all the legs, that always reminds me of something that is smooth and it's uh, round in the mouth where it covers a lot of the tongue and different taste buds and that kind of thing. So that's what I'm hoping. It's Medium or bigger body and yes. a good finish. All right, let's see. Do more raspberry. It is not as heavy tannin as the last one, but it still has the tannins. Mm -hmm. You still taste those. Did it have the body you were looking for? It um, lasted a little bit longer, but not as much as I had expected. So would you say light body or medium body? I'm going to say medium. Nothing's as hard as the last one. No, not at all. Any fruit in the mouth? Mm -hmm. I do taste a little bit of that raspberry, but it's kind of offset by the tannins. Mm. Kind of masked a little bit versus what you would, what the aroma says it's going to be. But 
it seems pretty light on my overall tongue. I'm getting a little tartness near the end. Maybe that is longer than I, than I thought it would last, but mm -hmm. when it first hits my tongue, I get the sense of lightness mm -hmm. and not, not a big finish. No. Was, was the finish here longer than or the same length as the last one? Uh, I think it was about the same length. Um, okay. Because I had expected it to be longer and it wasn't as such. Yes, I was surprised because I think I've had a Barbaresco before when I was in Austin, and it was a bigger wine. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't know what year it must have been, you know how long it was aged, that kind of thing. And this is uh, five-year-old wines that we're tasting. And the Barola is a, mm -hmm. a year older. Mm -hmm. That. And um, I think that's necessary for these wines that we're drinking to age them more because of the tannins and so forth. I think it's a restriction placed on these wines that they cannot ship them out until they're three years old. They have to be aged in the bottle or barrel before they're allowed to ship out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I th but Barolo, it should be aged for a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest wines. And what did you think was balanced? It seems like the nose set you up again mm -hmm. for something that was going to be bigger. Yes, yes. it really did. What would you eat with this? Uh, of course, I, my mind goes to Italian foods, so like a ragu or a, a carbonara. Uh, Ooh, carbonara. Or maybe a puttanesca. <laughs> Ooh, puttanesca. <laughs> Spicy. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love carbonara because you get to break a raw egg. <laughs> and the pasta and what's it called? Uh, yeah, or uh, of course, if you're thinking cheeses, maybe even a parmesan. Mm -hmm. From Parma, the parmesan. Come back on this one for a second. When I tasted this earlier, mm -hmm. I got a little tobacco on the end. Taste number one again, just for a second. I think it's going to surprise you. Do you get something at the end there? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I think there, I mean, I don't know what tobacco, tobacco would actually taste like, but that does. There's yeah. a little bit of that in Yeah, because yeah. you, you taste the second one and then you're back and it comes out mm -hmm. more pronounced. So, mm -hmm. you know, do that sometimes, everybody. You know, go back and say, wait a minute, that's getting something, but it, it stands out so much more if you have wine number two. It does. It really does. It's more pure gray. And mm -hmm. this one has, has more. Mm -hmm. wood on it. Okay, now we're going on to number three. Uh, let's take a look at what information we have on Barolo. Most people that want no wines have heard of Barolo. Not everybody's had one. It's like, oh, they're so expensive. So we didn't uh, break the bank a whole lot with this, but they're going to be more expensive. But they should be aged for a longer time than this one was, but it's, it's a 2014, so that's probably one of the oldest ones that we're having in the sensing. It's from a sandstone soil robust, sandstone soil, and it can be robust and austere. Uh, before the 1980s, they required decades of aging, but they have reduced the fermentation times and barrel aging now, so as it says, it must be aged three years in a bottle or barrel before you can ship it out. Um, they're, they're trying to go after the popular palates. You see a lot of Europe trying to go after the American wallet and the American palate. Mm -hmm. uh, we are having an impact on the wine industry. It says 13 to 16. This one is 14% that we are sensing. It's supposed to be gentler in the nose than the mouth. And the mouth can be rose petals, cherry and raspberry sauce. The mouth can be astringent tannins with high acidity. They suggest beef, Game, stews, veal, nutfish. 
Mm -hmm. I do not have this. Right. I could sense that right off. That these are not the wines you drink with uh, fish. Uh, or maybe maybe some chicken, but uh, sometimes the, that, those dishes would be too light to stand up to the wine. This seems, seems to be talking a whole lot about game. And I think I failed to show the second bottle after that last one, and I will do that. I will make up for that now. The second one is that we had that we finished sensing is the Barbaresco. And on the label, it says Roca Feliz. That's the name that you would use when you look it up. It's a 2015. And again, it won't say Nebbiolo on the front. On the back, wine made from Nebbiolo grapes. Distinctive and harmonious bouquet for body. It ages well. That's the Barbaresco. Now the one that we are sensing right now is a Barolo, Sergesio, 2014. Chanel Hacienda Agricola, a lot of Italian on the front, on the front. Not my key language. And we said before, this is 14% Sergesio. Okay. What do you think of this color compared to the other two? It's, um, again, I see the same, and maybe it's just me and what I'm wearing, <laughs> but it does look like it does have that orange tinge, uh, at, at least around the rim of it, and, um, and sort of uh, not a deep, deep, but it is. When you compare it to the other two, it seems to be more orangey red mm -hmm. than those yeah. two. Yeah, I which would, would so. indicate, you know, that other year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, age. Red. The orange is definitely on the edges of all three. What do you see about legs, the body on this puppy? It has a little bit of legs, but I don't think it has as much as the last. Yeah. It's close. It's close. Doesn't doesn't quite. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think the body is the way it moves in the glass? Is it going to be a bigger body than the last two? The same? Uh, it might be a bigger body. Yeah, it could. I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, that's part of this guessing game is yeah. just using your eyes and your nose and then guessing what it's mm -hmm. going to taste like before you do. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the aroma and the bouquet? Well, uh, this is odd. I had just a sensation of vanilla <laughs> there for a moment. I'm getting something from aged in wood. Mm -hmm. First, when I was opening this and tasting earlier, mm -hmm. I was getting cherry. Now mm -hmm. that it's, you know, I decanted all these, by the way. Um, I'm not getting as much cherry, but I'm getting a little bit more of this. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Aging. Sensing is the, the oaky of it or uh, something that's a little mellower, I would say, than um, so or berries or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and that could definitely be the oak. Mm -hmm. So that would be bouquet. Any fruit? Um, uh, <laughs> It reminds me of somewhat of mulberries. It's a little different than a bright berry. But it's a little tart. Mm -hmm. And that nose. Mulberry. So. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, mulberry. I like yeah, that. and you know what? I think I'm getting a little licorice. Whoa! Right at, you know, at the. Whoa. So it's complex? It yeah, this one this one is pretty complex. Did you guys get any licorice or um vanilla or mulberry? Ha! <laughs> that you're smoking pipe it. <laughs> all right. What's it gonna taste like? I'm hoping it tastes like all those things. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be big in the mouth? Is it, is it 
It's going to have a long finish. Um, um, it's going to coat you your know, comb. All of these have not had a huge long finish, so I, I guess I would hedge my bets and say maybe not. Yeah. She's getting smart here, folks. <laughs> Silky. It's very smooth. It's not not so much on the tannins. Which is and, nice. and it's not as tart. Mm -mm. It's like number one. Nope. Smooth. Much smoother. Silky. Well tannin. Any fruit in the mouth? Um, it's more like herbs than it is uh, fruit. Mm. I don't know if that's mm. normal, but. <laughs> mm. Flavors. We got herbs. Herbs. Um, you got a good palate. Uh, just unusual, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marilyn, I was going to ask you: do, do people's palates evolve as they drink wine? Or I sure think so. Pretty much, you drink your first wine, and you're going to drink that the rest of your life. Uh, I think, or does I think, it evolve? I think a lot of people start with sweet. Maybe they had some when they were a kid, uh, and then they may tiptoe into whites. They eventually move on to reds. Uh, they still may like whites, mm -hmm. but the beginning they may not and as they taste more wine boom, boom, boom. my palate <laughs> changed a whole lot i just loved an oaky chardonnay the bigger the better and people go hey you want us to put a piece of oak in the glass and i said would you <laughs> i'd like that now I, that's not the kind of white wine i like i want it uh, more french style so i think so and i'm just hearing dan say the same thing the other night that his palate is changing it's scary because you may invest in wines and go, oh no and my palate changing i don't like that as much but um i think it also comes with more wine tasting you start liking the more expensive <laughs> wines because they're more complex mm -hmm. than the cheaper one you get in the grocery mm -hmm. store so that's the good and bad news about taking this up as a hobby mm -hmm. but probably like anything the more you learn about art, the more you start appreciating and liking you know, the high end. I uh, started, uh, like you were saying, uh, drinking maybe an occasional glass of sweet wine when I was younger. And then I, in about 1989, I went to a conference where they had a nice banquet. And they had a very nicely cooked piece of filet, and they served a great Cabernet. This was in California, so mm. obviously. And from that moment, it was like, that's it. And really? so I drank reds for so long, and this, the bigger the better. And now I, I find enjoyment in just a light white wine during the summer. Mm. It's re refreshing. Uh, so it's a little bit backwards, I think, from what you're saying, but <laughs> oh, that was the way it evolved. No, mm -hmm. actually, I'm, lately I'm worried because I've, I've always gone for the French reds. The seller has all these French reds. And then I go to Paso Robles to it you know, for a week uh, recently and I went, oh, these big reds are great. So, but, but I like them both mm -hmm. and I think I like them in different settings. Well, I'm going back um, to Burgundy as soon as we can and I'm going to love, you know, the reds when I'm there. Mm -hmm. When I'm in California, I'm going to love the reds there. So, uh, it varies and I, I'm, I'm very weather oriented. Mm -hmm. If it's a hot, humid summer, I don't do much reds. I do very dry. Uh, white's chilled, pretty chilled. But hey, this is gonna happen to everybody and it's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's a fun part of the hobby. Evolving, the French always say, évolue. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't change my mind. My thoughts have evolved. Mes pensées sont évolue. Okay, so we, we, didn't, we didn't pick up fruit at all, or we, we think it's pretty much herbaceous. I have to fight for it, mm -hmm. but I may get a little tinge of cherry. Mm -hmm. 
in there, but it's incredibly subtle. Yes. Okay. Um, and we said it's a um, medium body. Is it a bigger body than the others? Is it the I don't think so. I think it's about the same. And you said low tannins. Yes, not not nearly the same as the first two. But did the nose freak you out again? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you keep expecting. Yes. This big thing because you were in California and had a big red. <laughs> what would you eat with this? I'm thinking like, uh, again, the meats, the, the heavier, gamier meats, uh, maybe. Um, roasted root vegetables, um, you know, carrots and, and um, meat squash and those kinds of things. Um, you may still do the pastas with it, would be nice still. Um, what? Something, it's a hearty, mm -hmm. hearty wine. We probably have a, a thinner version of it. But I'm saying, you know, you must get brown and orange watching that yeah. puppy move around now. When you have less in the glass, it mm -hmm. looks more uh, orange red. Okay. Anything else you want to say about that wine? No, this is my favorite, I think. Oh, -ho! Favorite, so. but you like the, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger. Right. Um, and, and the smoother tan, the tan has kind of smoothed out the difference between the 2014 versus the 2015. There's a, it's a little smoother, not as tart. I'm back and testing these for a second, but we do a final scoring. Like choose, choose the most fruity. They have a slightly bigger box. What is the fruit in two? In the mouth? Uh, is it black cherry? Or burnt cherry? Yes, I would say burnt, burnt cherry would be probably the more appropriate of the two. I like that. I want to go back. I'm going to go one, two, three real quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting a, a bigger body in two mm -hmm. and more of the fruit. One is not one of the most famous wines from the area. Barresco, Barbaresco and Barolo are. So, Gachinara. Had some, I think, negatives in the tart. We liked the spicy fruit in the nose, but the tannins seemed to overbalance this. And it wasn't well balanced because the nose told us something the body didn't. Barbaresco, when I go back, it seems to have not young, it's still got some young youth to it. You know, it's 2015. Mm -hmm. and it, it may have, uh, again, we had more promise in the nose than we got in the body. But it may have had a little bit of body, a little more fruit. Number three, we like the bouquet very much. It's complex. That's a sign of a very good wine. <laughs> we sit there for a while and go, oh, what is this thing? Uh, and we got herbaceousness in it. And a subtle, again, these are very subtle fruits. These are not strong fruit. Yeah. One thing about when you get really strong fruit, that often means it's a very young wine. I used to only drink aged burgundies and I realized I'm missing all that lovely fruit when they're younger. Um, and we uh, thought it was, they all were a little bigger in the nose than they were in the body. Mm -hmm. So they're equal par on that. So now when we realize that nothing's gonna get 20 points that I can afford, so the, probably not 20, but what would you give the Barolo as your favorite in terms of points? Um, I'm thinking probably 18 and a half. Sounds good. Yeah. And was the Barbaresco your second favorite? Yes, it was. And what would you give it? Um, I would give it uh, probably a 17 and a half. Okay because it lost a couple points on the body 
and the cannon. So I'll put it here. Move it on the body and then move on the tannin. So the, the heavier the tannins, I, I don't like as much. So that's why this uh, smoothed it out quite a bit. What would you give the gattinara? Um, I would say 17. 17. Okay. I mean, I might have that like with a spicy Asian food. Uh, it might uh, go well with that, but um, definitely would prefer uh, our last wine. <laughs> so that's our wrap up. Again, I'll repeat, we're going to put this in Excel and you'll see that in a couple minutes showing up here. But before we do, uh, I'm going to remind you of our next sensing. And we didn't know we were going to do this, but it just got added to the end. Uh, a friend of mine is dying to sense with us, and this guy works at the vineyard out here. He knows the front end of the business and the back end of the business. Uh, and he is a big fan of Beaujolais, and he probably knows a heck of a lot more about them than I do. So this will be a real treat for me. Uh, and we've got three here. I just recommend if you want to attend, you may want to read up on Gamay. That is the grape that comes in Beaujolais. And uh, these are three that we have just picked up. Uh, not easy to find. One from Oregon and one in New Zealand, I will tell you. And that's probably why it's pricey, is they're not that easy to find today. As Beaujolais has been the place, the best climate and everything, for uh, making the Gamay grape. But at any rate, rate uh, hold on a second, and we'll be back with that Excel spreadsheet. But before I go, I want to thank Robin, not just for doing this sensing with us, but for all the work you've been putting in on every one of these. It's been a great, fun time. Yeah, we just came up with this. We kept saying, geez, so many people are at home right now. Right. And it's wine in the era of pandemic. <laughs> yes. And we hope we give them something that they can enjoy and, and do with us. I did once on one online and I thought, well, you know, that's kind of fun. I think that's a cool thing to do. So anyway, uh, just a second, we'll be back with the Excel sheet. Bye-bye. Well, that was a really fun and interesting sensing. I have to watch those spots leaning over my shoulder here. She's trying to get a little camera time. Anyway, the one thing I noticed about this sensing more than any others is since we were tasting one grape from three different subregions, there were so many similarities because they were actually from the same country. If you look across, if you looked at the colors, the pale red with orange tint, that was about it across the board. Uh, each one of them, the nose was bigger than the wine was in the mouth. Uh, we're getting more earthy and complex as we moved into the bigger, uh, more aged Nebbiolo wines. Uh, on the negative side, the younger one and I'd say the less expensive uh, is more tart, and the tannin was out of balance. Uh, the Barbaresco, one thing we noticed about the Barbaresco later on is that as it kept opening up, it got more fruity, and the body seemed to get a little bigger. And I was enjoying that more and more as time went on. But we really thought that Barolo was fantastic. It was aged. But again, the body in the mouth wasn't as big as that a Roman bouquet would have led us to believe. So I think this was really fascinating, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks so much for joining us.